university is one of those really pivotal times in a lot of people's lives. A lot of growth happens, a lot of changes occur, a lot of people leave university with uh, spouses or jobs or crippling debt or anxiety. I left it with a whole new perspective and a whole new business that was completely unrelated to what I was studying. What's going on friend? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since we just had a sit down story time, so for today's video, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to share with you guys how a completely random university project led me down a whole new path and inspired me to start the business that I'm currently running. My name is Caitlin, and as you may know or may not know, I run a coffee roastery called Street Brew Coffee. I've been running it since October of 2019. And it's something that really came out of the blue and was like I mentioned inspired by a project at university So today I want to take a few minutes to sit down and kind of explain how that all came about with a little story time But what's a story time without a beverageino? That's better. Let's take a drink And dive into the story now, in case you're wondering, no, I did not go to school for business. I was actually in seminary going to school to become a pastor slash professor, but it was clear entrepreneurship was your girl's real calling. For my last year of grad school, I had to take a class called cultural intelligence. Now, if you're not sure what cultural intelligence is, don't worry, because I'm not sure I fully understand it either, but it has something to do with how well you relate and understand people and cultures that are different from yours. What's your empathy like? Are you able to relate and help them feel comfortable? Do you adapt easily? Now, this was a class that I honestly was not putting much stock into. It was pretty easy. It wasn't a part of my core classes, so I didn't need to super focus in it, and I was doing really well. So I was just cruising along until right near the end of the semester when the professor introduced our final project which was worth 40% of our grade. Somehow I had missed that earlier because I was doing super well. I had it on autopilot until there was this giant project and I didn't know what to do for it. For this end of the year massive project we basically had to find a social enterprise ministry or charity that was giving back and doing some kind of good in the world that we would be interested in working for and do a deep dive on that organization, talk to people who ran it and kind of do a full analysis on it, why we'd want to be involved in it and what good it was doing in the world, how it was crossing cultural boundaries and all that kind of fun stuff. Which is kind of crazy, we're in the senior year of grad school, a lot of us are locked in on the next phase of our life, what we want to be doing, going on to PhD programs, getting job offers, and now we have this massive project to find a ministry, a charity that we want to work with uh, in the future when for a lot of us that was not even the entire focus of our degree. Now if you need to know one thing about me, it's that I am an extremely passionate person. In order for me to do something and do it well, I have to give it my whole heart. I can't give a half effort, I can't be kind of into something, I have to have a full passion to go after it 100% and it was the same thing with this project. I couldn't find a ministry or organization that I wanted to be a part of that our professor had suggested that I could see myself being involved in. I wasn't passionate about any of them, I didn't see any of them involved in my future, and I couldn't do a full out 40% of my final grade research project on an organization or a ministry that I wasn't passionate about. So I had no idea what I was gonna do for this final project. As I was reading over the final guidelines and instructions for this project, completely uninspired and completely stuck, I kind of noticed that the professor left things a little bit vague. We could research and write about a company that already existed that we'd like to join, or a company that might exist in the future that maybe we even created. The only requirements were that it had to give back to community and cross some type of cultural uh, boundaries or lines. Now seeing that this was kind of open-ended really sparked something in me and really piqued my interest. Now I'm a little bit of a rebel to begin with. If you're gonna give me an open-ended assignment, especially an assignment that I'm struggling with, and let me do whatever I want with that assignment with no boundaries, then I'm gonna take it and push it to the furthest extent. So I decided that this meant I could totally make up whatever company I wanted to because it was my vision and my dream therefore my professor could not tell me that this company or this assignment wouldn't qualify. I remember as I was getting ready to do this project I called up one of my friends in the class and I was like dude I think I'm gonna make up a fake company and submit it and just see what the professor says. What's he gonna tell me that my dreams and my goals are invalid? Like come on there's nothing that he can say so I'm just gonna completely make this up because I can't find a ministry right now that I am passionate about to do this intense project about. And my friend was like dude don't do it you can't just make up a company and I was like watch me. 
Now that you know that I am an extremely passionate person, your girl went ham on this project because I actually became extremely passionate about the fictitious company that I was writing about, which is actually what my coffee company, Street Brew Coffee, is all about today. For the last several years, ever since I was a teenager, I've always wanted to own a coffee company. And for the last few years, even before I went to grad school and was studying to become a pastor, I always had this idea in my head to start a social enterprise coffee company that gives back to community and supports the homeless. So I decided in that moment that I was gonna create the company I've always dreamed of creating that didn't currently exist and use it for the basis of this project which was a little bit difficult because obviously it was not a project that existed. So I decided that for this massive project, I was gonna take a huge risk and do a research-based paper on a company that I had been dreaming about for years, a company that did not exist, but I was gonna essentially create it for this project and I decided to dream as big as I could and try to make it sound as legit as possible. So I did research a few other social enterprise coffee companies over in Europe that were good and was able to help me kind of formulate some good ideas, but your girl went ham and I essentially wrote a whole business plan. I got really passionate because I was writing about something that I had been dreaming about forever and I finally saw it in a practical way laid out in front of me in a way that it could become realistic. The goal was to start a coffee company, a social enterprise coffee company, and eventually open up a coffee shop that employs people who no longer want to be homeless by giving them jobs, offering them job skills, uh, a chance to earn money, and reintegrate back into society. And that by creating this coffee company, it was the perfect way to give back to community. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm in seminary, not business school, so I looked at my almost 30 page business outline that I had prepared for this fictitious company outlining all the business aspects of it, the purpose, the mission, all those crazy things, and I was like, oh boy, I can't submit this. So I actually had to rewrite the entire paper, I kept the business plan, but I rewrote the paper into a much smaller, like 15 page paper for my final project, and submitted it to the professor, and I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty dang proud of this, because I was so passionate about it, I knew I had nailed it, and there was no way my professor was gonna know that it was a fake company that I just made up last minute to try to pass this class. Now, a few days after I had submitted this final project, I kinda had for totally forgotten about it, I was focused on final exams, I got an email from my professor asking me to come meet him in his office so that he could talk about my final project, and I immediately panicked. I was like, oh no, I, there was no way I could have plagiarized this because it was a fictitious company that I completely made up, but is he mad that I completely made up a company for his final project? There's a, a lot of panic going on there. My friend who I called was like, dude, I told you, don't make up a fake company. You're gonna get busted. And I remember just getting to his office to talk to him and he was like, hey, I read your project and it's amazing. And I can tell through your writing that you are so extremely passionate about this company that you seriously need to take some time to pursue working for this company. He fully believed that it was a real company and I was like, Cool, cool, thanks for that. But he was like, you are just so incredibly passionate about this. I think you would absolutely crush it if you went and you worked for this company. And that really blew my mind. The fact that a fictitious company that I'm dreaming about was remarkable enough to get this accommodation from my professor who was like, no, seriously, go pursue this. That blew my mind and really kind of sparked in me to start my coffee company, Street Brew Coffee. And it was so crazy to me in that moment, I just remember that the fact my, my professor saw my passion for something that didn't even exist, a dream in the future, and took his time to tell me that I needed to pursue this because I was so passionate about it. It's crazy that this final project that I forgot about totally BS'd and made up on the spot last minute would actually go on to become the company that I founded and run today and I'm so incredibly passionate about. After I graduated and I came back home, my dad, who many of you affectionately know as Papa Street Brew, mentioned that he had been dreaming and brainstorming and really thinking about starting this coffee company that we had been talking about for years. Both of us were thinking about it, both of us were marinating and resonating in it. Now was the time to execute it. And that, my friends, is how a university project inspired me to start Street Brew Coffee, the business that I am now currently running. In this project that I went hardcore on, I wrote about a social enterprise coffee company that roasts fresh coffee and owns a coffee shop and employs people who want to transition out of homelessness back into society by offering them jobs and job skills and money and just a second chance at life, just a way to give back and help people change their lives in a really practical way. And that, my friend, is what I hope Street Brew Coffee can become. So I guess I did take something from seminary after all. 
I really hope you guys enjoyed today's story time of how a university project led me to start the business that I'm running today. I really love sharing story times and sharing a different side of my entrepreneurship journey, how I got started and all that kind of stuff. So let me know in the comments below if you guys would like to hear more about that stuff. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Join this coffee love and family. Watch more videos about coffee, entrepreneurship, all kinds of crazy things coming your way. So hit that button, join the family. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, remember, drink better coffee.